today. Before we get started, let's learn some of the stuff that we already learned. I see a problem that involves line of best fit. It says write a function rule from, and then it gives me that chart right there. Well, that doesn't really help me out a lot. So I'm going to get my lin or uh, what it is it called? N C T M. Uh, whoopsies. N C T M line of best fit calculator. I have it saved. There it is, probably backwards for you. I don't know why it's giving me tattoo parlors. But I'll take that. Um, here we are. No more tattoos. No more tattoos. Probably backwards. Uh, or maybe not. I don't know if it's backwards. I don't remember if it's backwards. I think it's normal on Google Meet. It's backwards when I do my screencastify videos that I make. So I'm gonna type in zero, three, add point. See it? Then I'm going to type out two, 11, add point, four, 19, add point, uh, la, 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 six, 27, add point, and 8.35 add point. Look at them points. Look at all them points. All five of them. I'm going to scroll up and click on the thing that says show the line of best fit. And the line of best fit that it gives me is y equals 4x plus 3. Y, uh, 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 y, uh, uh, y equals 4x plus 3. Oof. Is Celine Dion somewhere in the room? No, that's me. So that's what we did quite like only about a billion times in the first three sections of this chapter. What we're going to do today talks about what this chapter is mainly about, functions, but specifically linear functions. I will determine the difference between linear and nonlinear. So, comparing linear and nonlinear functions, section four. Section five will be about looking at graphs. Section six will be about something called the vertical line test. And uh, that should be the end of the chapter. So we're more than halfway through. All right. Linear functions, linear functions form straight lines when you graph them. Wait a minute. Something with the word line in it makes a line? That's crazy. No. No. Linear functions form a straight line on graph. There's three ways that you could possibly see a linear function. Or three ways that I could give you something and say, is that linear or not linear? I can just give you a picture. And if it's a straight line, then it's linear. If it's not a straight line, then it's not linear. Or you would say nonlinear. Linear functions, so that's one way. Way number two is instead of giving you a picture, I can give you an equation. And if you can find a way to turn that equation into y equals mx plus b, which is slope-intercept form, slope-intercept form, slope-intercept form, then it's linear. If you can write it out so that y is all by itself, and then you have, maybe you have a number in front of x, but it's just an x. What you don't have is you have no x squared. So not an x squared, not an x cubed not a something over x like i don't know something over x uh you don't have the square root of x you don't have the absolute value of x which you won't see in this class but there it is anyway if you see that happening if you see that going on then it's no longer linear okay um so Linear has to look like slope-intercept form, or if you can make it look like slope-intercept form, then you're in great shape. But the most important thing is you have y on the left and you have x on the right. If y is on the left and x is on the right and there's no x squared and there's no x cubed and there's none of this other stuff, then you're fine. 
Thing number three, I probably should have called this three, is they also all have to follow the same slope pattern. Maybe I give you a table. This is called a t-table. Maybe I give you a table, and in this table, I, I try to find a pattern uh, or a rise over run pattern, a y over x pattern. And as I go along this pattern, x goes up by 1, x goes up by 1, x goes up by 1. That's a pattern. Y goes up by 2, Y goes up by 2, Y goes up by 2. That's another pattern. If I have the same Y over X pattern every time, and in this case, the Y over X pattern is 2 over 1, 2 over 1, 2 over 1, then I'm good. And if by saying 2 over 1, that's giving you flashbacks of slope, where I go up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, that's exactly what I'm doing. Okay, my goal is to make sure that if it's a linear equation, it's going to be a line, and lines have to have a slope that's consistent throughout. Okay, so y equals slope x plus b. I need a consistent slope. Over here, I have an x value where I go up by, actually it goes up by 1. I don't know why it says plus 3, but it's plus 1, plus 1, plus 1. Over here, it's plus 3, plus 1, plus 2. And since that pattern over here broke, it's no longer linear. So if I look at this guy, that goes up plus 1, plus 1, plus 1. That's good. This goes down minus 5, minus 3, minus 1. Since they go down by separate things, this one's a no. And if you're looking at that and like, oh, that's too small, I'm not sure... We're going to do examples. Don't you worry your pretty little heads off. Let's start out with the easiest possibility that you can see. If I give you pictures and ask you if it's linear or not linear, it's a simple question. Is it a line or is it not a line? Are you linear or nonlinear? You're non because you're not a line. It's this little curvy looking thing. Are you linear? Yes. It's a straight line. Are you linear? No, because although that's a line and that's a line and that's a line, it's not a line, which means it's not linear. It's not linear. It's not a line. Is that a line? Yes. So it's linear. Easy. Easy. Oh, sure. I'm in a good mood. I'll do a few more. Are you a straight line? Yeah, so you're linear, okay? Are you a straight line? No, so you're nonlinear, okay? Are you a straight line? No, so you're also nonlinear, okay? The easiest problems that you'll probably ever see in eighth grade math. These are medium difficulty. What I said here is you have to determine if I can get this in the form of y equals mx plus b. So let me rewrite that out. Can I make this look like y equals mx plus b? So I have 5y equals 2x. Is y all by itself? No. Can I get y all by itself? Sure. If I divide both sides by 5, that's supposed to be a different color. I get y equals 2 fifths x. If you have a y on the left and an x on the right and x isn't crazy, you're good. So is this linear? Yes. Because I have a Y on the left and an X on the right and the X is not, I don't care about the numbers that surround it. As long as X is X and it's not X squared and it's not X cubed and X is not on the bottom and it's not square root of X, I am in great, 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 great shape. I don't even have to do anything with this because this guy is literally the same as that guy. Well, so that makes life easier. That's linear too because if Y is on the left, and X is on the right, and X isn't crazy, I'm in great shape. What about you? 
Is Y all by itself? No. But can I get Y all by itself? Of course I can. I can divide both sides by 10. Y equals 4 over 10. Oh, that's just 2 fifths again. Oh, so look. Y equals 2 fifths X again. Y is on the left again. X is on the right again. There's no other crazy things turning X into something crazy again. So this is linear again, just like it was here and just like it was here. Is Y all by itself over here? That's supposed to be a five. No. Can I get y all by itself? Sure I can. I can divide both sides by 5 and x, because it's 5x times y, so I have to divide both sides by 5 and x. So I have y equals 2 over 5x. Now, wait a minute. I have y on the left. I have x on the right. But x is on the bottom. X is not allowed to be on the bottom. Drake was. That's where he started. But X is not allowed to be on the bottom. So X is different here, as 2 Chain said. Oh, that's two rap references in 30 seconds. I'm on fire today. Uh, that's not linear. Because X is on the bottom, it's nonlinear. If X is on the bottom, if it's X squared, if it's X cubed, if it's X to the fourth, if it's square root of X, if it's absolute value of x, then it becomes nonlinear. Medium difficulty. And this, so again, we have three ways of looking at these problems. There's going to be three types of, is that linear type of problem? Way number one is this guy. Way number two is this guy, equations. And way number three is this guy, a chart. Let me mute myself so you don't have an echo. All right, I have to find out if this set of points is linear or nonlinear. The way I do that is I try to see if the slope or the rate of change is the same all the way throughout. So what I have to do is I have to compare the y over x for all of these and make sure the same. Now, why am I doing y over x? Because it's rise over run. If the rise over run is the same, that means it follows a pattern. It makes a straight line. 5 to 10 is positive 5. 0 to 3 is positive 3. y over x is 3 over 5. Uh, 10 to 20 is positive 10. 3 to 6 is positive 3. Uh, 3 over 10. We just had a change, which means if I don't have the same pattern going throughout, it's not linear. So is this linear or nonlinear? Nonlinear. The pattern broke because... 3 over 10 breaks it. So I, I have a chart, and my job is to make sure that the slope is the same or the pattern is the same. The y over x is the same. So I take a look at my chart. I ask myself, all right, well, how do I get from 0 to 1? I add 1. How do I get from 1 to 2? I add 1. How do I get from 2 to 3? I add 1. Pattern. How do I get from 4 to 8? I add 4. How do I get from 8 to 12? I add 4. How do I get from 12 to 16? I add 4. So what I get is I get a pattern across the top. I get a pattern across the bottom. And in each case that I have here, if I'm comparing it to y over x, 
uh, my y changes four and my x changes one. So I get four over one and four over one and four over one each time. What I'm doing, again, is I'm finding the pattern for my x's, I'm finding the pattern for my y's. And if the y over x is the same time, every time, I'm good. I got 4 over 1 and 4 over 1 and 4 over 1. So it stayed the same. Is this linear or nonlinear? It's linear because when I found the pattern, the pattern didn't change. So with these, these are easy. If this is just the same number every time, and if that's just the same number every time, I could stop right there and say linear. But I like to go the extra step and say, no, 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 I'm gonna, I'd rather be safe than sorry and do y over x and y over x means 4 over 1 and 4 over 1 and 4 over 1 again. Ooh, a different looking chart. Same rules. I care about the pattern of y over x is, is this linear or nonlinear. I go from 2 to 4, which is a change of plus 2. I have to add 2 to get from 4 to 6. And I have to add 2 to get from 6 to 8. That's what I do. I find the pattern. How do I get from 2 to 4, from 4 to 6, from 6 to 8? And you add 2 every time. My pattern from 5 to 10 is I have to add 5. I add 5 again, 10 to 15. And 15 to 20 is I add 5 again. So on the left, I have plus 2. On the right, I have plus 5. Did it change? Nope. Did it change? Nope. It's linear. I'd rather be safe than sorry because I like to look at y over x. So the change in the y's is plus is this guy over that guy, which is x. 5 over 2 and 5 over 2 again and 5 over 2 again. The same exact number every time this is linear. I didn't have to write out over here in red but I did anyway because I'm not a math teacher. It's what I do. It's what I do. Another chart. Ooh, we're going backwards. We're going backwards. How do I get from 6 to 5? I minus 1. How do I get from 5 to 4? I minus 1. How do I get from 4 to 3? I minus 1. How do I get from 21 to 15? Oh, 21, 9 plus 10. How do I get from 21 to 15? I minus 6. How do I get from 15 to 10? I minus 5. How do I get from 10 to 6? I minus 4. So what I have, if I focus on my y's over x's, my y over x for this one is, I, my y is negative 6, my x is negative 1. I get negative 6 over negative 1, which is just 6. For here, I get negative 5 over negative 1. Negative 5 over negative 1 is just 5. Uh-oh. Ah, my pattern broke. And I saw that right away. Since all of this was up here was negative 1, all of that up there was negative 1, and then I went from negative 6 to negative 5 to negative 4, I started getting different numbers on the bottom completely. I don't care if that's a cute little pattern. That doesn't matter. What matters is that I have my y over x is negative 6 over negative 1, and negative 5 over negative 1. That's different. And negative 4 over negative 1. That's also different. They're all going to be different. So is this linear or nonlinear? No, it's nonlinear. And it's nonlinear because even though I had a pattern for the x values, I had a pattern upstairs, my pattern downstairs changed every time. I went from negative 6 to negative 5 to negative 4. That broke, that changed, which means it's no longer a pattern. Hmm. Hmm, y over x, let me see. I add 1, I add 1, I add 1, 
and I add one. I get from one to two by adding one. I get from two to three by adding one. I get from three to four by adding one. I get from four to five by adding one. I get from 20 to 25 by adding five. I get from 25 to 33 by adding not five, eight. I get from 33 to 42, that's a plus nine. And that's a plus six. So clearly, if I wanted to do my y's over x's, remember the right side's always y, that would be 5 over 1, then 8 over 1, then 9 over 1. It's not the same number every time. I'm supposed to get the same number every time. And I don't. Different numbers every time. I got the same number over here. Good. I got different numbers over here. Bad. That's what makes it nonlinear. Plus one. Plus one. Plus one. Plus one. Plus four. Nope. Nope. Why? Because up top, I had all plus ones, which means on the bottom, they have to all be the same number, too. They don't all have to be plus ones on the bottom. They just all have to be the same number. If this was plus one, plus one, plus one, then I'm, I have my pattern. If this was plus one, plus 80, plus 80, plus 80, great. That's my pattern. But since this is plus one, plus one, plus one, and this is plus one, plus four, it stopped already. This would be plus 18. And so y over x would be 1 over 1, and y over x would be 4 over 1, which is different, and y over x would be uh, 18 over 1, which is completely different. Okay. Pretty easy. Let's do one more. Gross with these numbers. Why did I include this problem? What's wrong with me? Don't answer that. Plus 1... 2 to 3 is plus 1, 3 to 4 is plus 1, 4 to 5 is plus 1. I now know that if I'm adding by the same number on that side every time, that these numbers also have to be, whatever number they are, they have to be the same. So this is a plus 175. This is 185 my number changed. And since my number changed, I could just stop right there and I'm not gonna worry about y over x's because I already know that this is not, it's not a straight line if you graph those points. Is the equation on the right linear? Uh, is it a straight line? Yeah. 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 Uh, is this a slope? Okay. Um, rise over run. I can start at zero, zero. So my rise is one. No, nope. up 25, up 50, up 75. I do go over one every time though. So I went up 75 over one, two, three. The slope is 75 over three, which is 25. Ah! And, and you can see that. Up 25 over 1, 25 over 1, 25 over 1, 25 over 1. It's the same numbers every time. That's why I always say it's the Y over the X's and it's got to be a pattern. Because if it was 25 over 1, 25 over 1, 50 over 1, it's no longer a straight line. Easy. Soup's easy, baby. I'm gonna stop.